Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, guess who I've got on? I've got another, a past guest. She's back again. Her name is Karen and the last name is Ford, right? <laughs> yes. Easy breezy. See, I just yes. murdered. <laughs> I've, I've got a memory. 63 years old. I'm not missing it. I got it all here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so if I remember right, you're over on the East Coast. And is, yes. it, is it Virginia? West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, yes. we talked about that because you're on the east side of West Virginia. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <sighs> How's the weather out there? Is it good and warm? And Actually, it's going to get nice and hot today. I think right now yes. it's 75, something like that, but it's supposed to get up into the high 80s today and tomorrow. We had a pretty good rainstorm last night, but I see it's kind of passing along so we're ready for some sunshine now <laughs> i can i can feel it in the air the fall is coming up here and it's only yeah. august but i can feel it's coming but part of the deal isn't <laughs> it that's right say hey would you like to talk at all but a little bit start off talk a little conversation about cryptocurrency and bitcoin and stuff <laughs> sure the, the reason being is because i know that you don't know a whole bunch about it and neither do i yeah. but it's intriguing to me because of the way things are there was some talk about them getting rid of a bunch of coins because of the COVID thing. It had, you know, they're dirty, so they spread germs. Right. Things yeah. are going digitally. And I thought maybe if we put our two beginner heads together, whereas novices, sure. we might come up with something brilliant. Absolutely. Well, I don't know a whole lot about cryptocurrency. However, I do, I have invested in it. So, See, you know. You're step ahead. You're step ahead of me. I have nothing. Invest in it, you know, you know, and I always, here's my rule of thumb let's just pretend whatever you invest in you're going to lose it let's just pretend you have to be okay with you you're, you have to ask yourself if i lose this amount of money that i'm investing am i going to be okay so in other words if you invest a hundred dollars five hundred dollars twenty thousand dollars whatever the amount is if you lose it are you going to be okay that is a great rule of thumb because if you're thinking, oh no, I probably wouldn't be okay if I invested twenty thousand dollars and lost it all, but I think I'd be okay if I invested five hundred in it. Right. So, you know, generally speaking, I prefer uh, knowing about the investment a little more uh, before I invest in that particular uh, item. However, you know, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, etc. There's actually a website where you can purchase it, uh, as I have. Uh, and you can invest in that. Now, about two or three years ago, it was up to $1,500 or $1,600 per coin. Now, it dropped down, you know, long before the COVID occurred, uh, but it's starting to pop back up again. So, so what's it's just weird something to keep it, an eye on. I, I totally agree with you on if you, can't, if you can't afford to lose it, don't, because it is a gamble. All this stuff is a gamble. Sure. But um, the thing about the whole cryptocurrency thing is it seems like it's going that way of a digital currency, but it seems kind of weird to invest money into investing in money. It's right. Investing in gold is something <laughs> yeah. different where you could take the gold right. and melt it down and make jewelry or something. There you or go. Investing in like digital stuff. I know. It's kind of weird. I prefer tangible. In other words, you know, when I buy gold and silver, I don't necessarily want them to hold it for me and they give me a certificate or a piece of paper for it. I prefer tangible. So if I buy gold or silver, it's going to be in my hand where I'm going to place it where I want to place it. Well, I can see um, investing in like real estate because it is a tangible. I'm invested in REITs. So some of that money goes into, you know, commercial and residential and yes. shopping malls and apartment complexes. I have both. I have REITs as well. It's good to right. have that. But investing yes. in something like a cryptocurrency, it's a digital fluffy thing. Yes, it and is. And it's something just to keep an eye on, you know, it's easy to check online just every morning or every evening, only takes a couple of minutes. It's not like, you know, somebody doesn't have that amount of time to check. I think on it, it might be a good idea to get invested in it just so you understand how it works. You know, it's yes. kind of like with cash, you know what a $1 bill is, a $5 bill and a 10 and the two of those makes a 20. Understanding right. how that works right. is because uh, you can make a promissory note on a napkin. Right. Does that really work? <laughs> is that right. money? 
Yeah. And now there's this <laughs> digital thing and it's encrypted and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's kind of strange, but it, I think it is going to be, I mean, I have a little saying, it's Captain Kirk never carried a wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, he did not. <laughs> they, they just somehow they just transferred money and he was able to consume food. Somehow he got it and he got his clothes. He had his uniforms and I never saw if he was wearing a Rolex or anything like that. But <laughs> yeah. They seemed to get by. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just a weird thing with your your background in money. It's my, my wife's going through some stuff right now, working with her planner to put together a plan because it's important mm -hmm. to have that plan kind of thing. Yes. I'm amazed at how many people don't have anything saved up and they're living, you know, paycheck to paycheck oh, and they don't have that's anything that's even off to the side or, you know, a, a tire goes flat or something. They're not prepared for it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's scary. It's actually very scary because, you know, everything, if something happens, let's say a flat tire that has to, that can't be repaired, that you have to replace, and if they don't have the money in the bank to take care of that, everything becomes an emergency. Right. And that's why it's so important for people to have what we call an emergency fund. And that's separate from a savings account. I mean, most of these people, if they don't have money in the bank to take care of a, of a tire, then they don't have a savings account. But separate from a savings account, earmark it and title it. You know, you can go online, you can actually name various accounts, whatever it is you want to call it. You know, you can have one that's called an emergency fund. And it's important that people have, you know, three to six months of living expenses in that. And yes, it is possible. In other words, if your living expenses, house, car, gas, utilities, food, whatever, whatever your living expenses are. Let's say there it's $2,000 a month for you. Well, then you need three to six months of that in an emergency fund somewhere between I think six and some people, when they hear that, that, oh my God, I'm going to have to, I don't have any money right now and you want me to store some for three to six months, they get overwhelmed by that. Thinking yes, that they need to have it tomorrow. it's a little bit at a time. Right. It's a, it's a little bit at a time. Yeah. I, I think of the tortoise and the hare. Who won? <laughs> yeah. Right? Who it just won? Makes it sense. was the one that just kept on, just kept on. So even if, you know, whether it's fifty dollars a week, a hundred dollars a week, whatever, you know, and you can manage or your paycheck, <laughs> you sock it away in that emergency fund so that you have it. And I think this the, the easiest way to do it these days, you can have multiple accounts in your bank and you could create like back when I learned about this process, there was your checking account for fluid money your savings yes. account for if something, if all of a sudden you needed something, then you got your emergency yes. account, then you got your retirement because yes. you're going to need it someday. Yes. And then there's your mad money account for like, Hey, we're going to take off to Hawaii this weekend. So if you have those yeah. five accounts to do that, you can create those in your bank and just, just, you, you've got this automation thing going on where it'll take like five bucks and put it in each one. And when you yes. start getting more money, you can raise it up to like 10 bucks. And yes. You can adjust that. Absolutely. Kind of you know, and sometimes what people too, Brad, is they'll, um, if they have direct deposit, they, they'll instruct the bank or they'll instruct their uh, employer uh, for the direct deposit and they'll have their employer automatically take money out for a retirement plan, whether it's IRA, 401k, what have you, or Roth, and out of sight, out of mind. You know, most of the That's time right. you're not going to miss it. So if you typically get paid, let's just say $5,000 every time you get paid, let's just say that. And let's say you decide, hey, $1,000 of that is going to go into a Roth or a 401k, uh, whatever the amount is. Then you get your paycheck, $4,000. You're not going to miss that thousand because it was already taken out of your paycheck before you even got your paycheck. Yeah, you yeah. know, so that's yeah. one way of looking at it, whether no matter how large or small of amount it is, the important thing is, is that you do it, whether it's $50, $20, those little things actually add up. You need they to do really something to get it out of your hands. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. As you go to Starbucks and you go, hey, I want one of those big, uh, big venti, and uh -huh. you reach in your pocket and there's nothing there, you go, oh, I guess I can't have that coffee. But if it's right. there, you spend it. 
Right. You know, back in the day, I think it was in the 30s or 40, maybe the 30s or 40s. Remember Glenn Miller band with the yeah. trumpets and all of that? Sure. Okay. There was actually a, a Lifetime movie about him and his band and his wife. And long story short, they shortly got, a, got married. They got married. And shortly thereafter, she said, well, you know, I'm going to take money out of your pocket. And he said, okay, yeah. And he just kind of laughed it off. And it was several months later, he kept working and working and working with his band and found out, you know, to make a record. Yes, there are things called records before DVDs or CDs came about or your little pod thing, pod nano. But uh, he said he wanted to make a record, but he didn't have the money to make the record. And it was going to be at, at that time, this was a lot of money. It was over $800. And he was sharing this information with his wife. And she said, well, I told you I would take change out of your pocket every night. And she handed him the money so he could make his record. So, you know, coins here, dollars there adds up. So he was able to do that because of what her actions were. I thought that was just a really intriguing story. Well, as humans, we're consumers. So we need to trick ourselves some way. And the way I used to do it when I was doing my magic business full time is I'm not good with math. So what I do in the checkbook, if I set a, a check for $79, I'd round yeah. it up to 100 and that's my balance. And then yeah. at the end of the year, I had like five or $7,000 in there and I'd take off to Jamaica for three weeks and just party for three weeks because at the you end know, of the year. I've done that weeks. before in my checking account is, you know, if it's if 75 bucks, pop it up to a hundred or 80 or whatever. It's easier. Yeah, you, trick your, you trick yourself. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> That's yeah, and, awesome. And I got the, you know, the, the change. I haven't been out in the society much since the COVID stuff, but all the time you get that change that accumulates. And I got one of those big glass jugs back here and I just pour it in there and the thing gets... Yep so big then i gotta break it to get it out because i can't lift it yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> so that's your financial advice trick yourself trick yourself yeah you have to trick yourself if you're not you know if you're really not willing to do it if you're thinking ah, i'm just not gonna I'm oh it's gonna it's so easy you know you just have to trick back in the late 90s i ran into some serious financial difficulties and i had to i was kind of homeless on the street in in california and I would go to the coffee shop where I could get a coffee for a dollar fifty, and they had chocolate and stuff there, so I could put some chocolate in it, and I put a little yeah. sugar packet in it, and I would make my own little mocha. Yeah, because <laughs> I only it. had a dollar fifty cents. But as soon right. as I got my back on my feet and I moved back to Minneapolis and I was making money, pretty soon it's you know six dollars and fifty cents for a Starbucks venti <laughs> mocha. Right. So yeah, you know, you and it adds yourself. up. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> it does. Um, I don't think it was you. I think it was another financial person. They're telling a story. Maybe it was you that had a client that they were buying coffee. Was that you? That was me. Yes. Every day. <laughs> oh my God. I'm buying way too much coffee. And it's just subtle things like that, that you don't realize. And um, yeah, he was actually spending, I think it was a $350 a month on coffee. <laughs> Because he, he bought his coffee every day on his way to work. That was five days a week. <laughs> That's a lot of money on coffee. Yeah, well, it's a car payment. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you realize the, uh, how stuff accumulates, and then when you get into that compounding thing, if that money yeah. would have been tucked away in a REITs. Oh, yeah. Right. Ooh, yeah. Even the REITs are coming back. I just checked the REITs this morning. would be sweet. <laughs> REITs, REITs are coming back right now. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we talked a little bit about fake electronic money, and we talked a little bit about investing. What's another thing to talk about in the financial world? About um, well, we could say the four-letter word budget. <laughs> that's a four-letter word. <laughs> budget. You know, and I tell people, if people hear that, and it's almost like nails going across a. Uh, across a uh, chalkboard. But isn't that just ah, like those little accounts? You have separate accounts. That's kind of budgeting for it. And you realize if it's not there, absolutely. I can't spend it. Mm -hmm. But a budget is actually your friend because, well, first of all, it's not four letters. It's not a four letter word. It's a six letter word. But the budget, and this is a great thing to, to say right here, is a budget is you telling your money what you want it to do instead of wondering where it went. 
And so many times I've talked with people, Brad, where I say, have you ever had money in your wallet? And at the end of the week, you think, what happened to all that money that was in my wallet? And they say, yeah. And I say, do you ever look at the end of the month and think, oh, what happened to all that money I made? And they're like, yeah. And I say, and at tax time, do you look at your W-2, that thing that comes in the mail, and you think, oh my goodness, I made all that money? What happened to all that money? They say, yeah, and I say, you don't budget, do you? <laughs> because nine times out of 10, if you, you know, if you budget, you know what happened to that money that was in your wallet. You know what happened to that money at the end of the month because you can remember where you spent it because you allocated, you allotted for particular um, expenditures, things you were going to spend on. And at the end of the year, when you get that W-2 and you think, yeah, I did make all that money, you know where that money went because you have created a budget and a plan. And that's basically what a budget is. It's a plan for your money and you're in the driver's seat. If you don't budget, you are in the passenger seat. <laughs> do, do, do you know the name T. Harv Ecker? No, I don't actually. He, he's a guy who did some stuff on public television stuff, and he had one of these uh, processes of money, and he's, he was his jar method. And he basically used those five different things, and he had these, uh, these jars, and that's what you did with your change when you got home for the week or whatever. You took your change, and you allocated yeah. this percentage into there. That, so every dollar, you'd break right. it out into these jars, and then you can kind of see what the heck is going where and how it's all happening. Because I think that's a right. piece of the whole budgeting thing is being able to see it. Right. Then, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you have to see it. You have to make a plan. Well, we've gone for about, it looks like almost we're 16 minutes after. So it's like gonna, we don't want to go too long with all this stuff because time is money sometimes, they say. That's not true, though. If time was money, <laughs> we'd all have the same amount, right? Well, that's true. Time, a lot of times, no pun intended, is really, you know, just as valuable as money because I can always make money, but I cannot make time. Right. I cannot create time. Well, I can't create money either unless I want to go to jail. However, <laughs> but, you know, I can make money. Making money is actually not a hard thing, but you can't make time. And so that's why it's so important to watch what our what we're giving our time to as yeah, well. It gets used up every <laughs> day. So let's yeah. uh, close this up by having another conversation about a different topic of money. And that is okay. that thing called a health savings account. Do you ever deal with that kind of stuff? I have, I have. You know, a health savings account, um, you know, a lot of employers actually offer that these days because they see the value in it. And that you can actually, depending on who you work for, you can actually have your employer set, set that up and automatically have money placed in that health savings account. And then you can spend it down. And at the end of the year, you use it all up. But if you don't use it all up, you have to check the rules on it because sometimes it's different for different employers. Some of it will roll over for the next year. So looking into that, that's actually a great idea, to be honest with you, especially with so many health issues today, you know? And with so many people that are going to be, um, they're going to be more self-employed, having to be able to set something like that up for yourself. Because that's, you know, exactly that's, right. that's, that's a big reason some people take jobs is just for the health benefits. Right, right. That's true. <laughs> you're going to be self-employed. You want to figure out what are you going to do for that kind of health insurance thing? And why not? You know, have it in something like a health savings account where if you don't get sick, you got a bunch of money right. and you can go enjoy it. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we are about 20 minutes into this. So I'm going to, Karen, I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe and I'll send it off to you. And then beam it up. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you taking the time. This has been fun. I really enjoy Money is an interesting thing. It's, it's, uh, it's something that people don't really think about. They think about That's the printed so stuff, but it's really not that. To me, money is just a measuring system for expended energy. Right. That's, That's right. And everybody needs money. I, haven't, I have not ringing an into not one person yet to tell me, oh, I don't need any more money, or oh no, I don't want any more money. Everybody needs money. It's the method of exchange <laughs> until that Bitcoin thing comes along and everybody's doing it. But even then, it's going to somehow in your account is going to be your value. When you run out of value, people ain't going to want to be around you, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much. This has been fun again. 
Thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you, Brad. Peace. Peace. <laughs>